Good afternoon, everybody. Let me get a quick sound check so I know everybody can hear us loud and clear. And welcome back. We are continuing our Closing Bell webinar series today with a fantastic guest. Before we introduce him, though, of course, I just want to do a quick sound check. How is the audio coming in, guys? Loud and clear? Perfect. Great to see everybody here with us today. Anne, Agatha, Thomas, Eric, JJ, Rick, Leda. A lot of our CTU students here with us coming back from our uh, monthly classes that we are continuing on this week. Great to see everybody, of course. And as I said, welcome back to our Closing Bell webinar series. Um, once again, my name is Josh Levitan, one of Fausto's day trading instructors, and we have a phenomenal guest here with us today. I was kind of touting him a little bit in our trading room. Um, and of course, as we were wrapping up the post-market update today, um, not only a good personal friend of Fausto's, but of course, one of the best mentors out there um, aside from CTU, of course, we have Norman Hallett, the disciplined trader. So what Norman will be going over with us today, um, you see the topic of his uh, webinar, the four pillars of the disciplined trader. And, you know, in our closing bell webinar series, guys, we usually bring on a guest to talk about their trading system, whether it's stocks or options, futures, Forex, whatever it may be. There are so many different av avenues in the market to trade. But it really just starts from the inside. It starts from your mindset, your mentality as a trader. And that's exactly what Norman is here to discuss with us today. So Norman has been around for a little while right now. He's, he's the um, founder of the Disciplined Trader. Um, and of course, he's the co-founder and CEO of another corporation, Subconscious Trading Corporation, headquartered in Florida, um, going over state-of-the-art mental training programs, including, of course, the Disciplined Trader. All right, so you may have seen him. You may have heard him on his popular radio, radio talk show, Risky Business. Uh, been running for five years straight right now. So he's been all around a great a asset and, of course, a great personality as well. So that's where I was saying that this should be a very exciting webinar, if not if not more than, for than informative. All right, so without further ado, let's introduce Norman. Norman, are you there? wanted to see if your uh, audio is connecting there, Norman. <laughs> All right, give me a quick sec, guys. We'll get his audio up and running in just one brief moment. <laughs> ah, there we go, and he didn't want to wait. There we go. All right, so let's just see right now. We're gonna get his uh, audio set up in just one brief moment, guys. Sorry about that. That looks like the problem, Josh. Can anybody hear me now, Lita? Who? Uh, there Lita, we go. Loud and loud and clear. There, Norman. You're all set. I feel like. Let's just get a quick quick chat back from our students okay. here. Okay. Hi. All right. Everybody. Okay. Here now. So I'm loud and clear. I'm. I sound at least as good as Josh. <laughs> yep. Absolutely, Norman. You're crystal clear. I know that's clear, a hard question. The, uh, at least. Okay. That's the right answer. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I, I love presenting for. Um, for Fausto because first of all he has the coolest name I ever heard uh, secondly he's my size and he's actually a better dresser than I am I don't know if you've ever seen him personally um, but uh, he's always wearing a three-piece suit I, I know if he still does I haven't seen him in about a year personally but last time I saw him at, at actually a party in Las Vegas that he um, uh, that he that he um, uh, hosted, he was, uh, he, and last time I actually hugged him, uh, he was wearing that three-piece suit. Anyway, he's got smart people around him, as you know with Josh, I just heard a bit of that wrap-up, and Eric I'm getting to know. Um, I've known Fausto for 10 or 15 years, and uh, listen, w when you're around Fausto, you, you pretty much got it together. At least you have a basic appreciation of the importance of the mental training and the mental side of trading. It's really the only thing that you control. And the truth of the matter is, you know, I always thought it was kind of interesting that um, 
that 90% of traders lose, and that's actually a proven fact now, somewhere between the studies that have been done, 88%, 92% of traders lose. The other, say, 10% are either even or win. So, you know, out of that 10%, there's probably 7 or 8% that are actually winning, making some money. And um, Fausto's always had his uh, his percentage of winners. But it's funny that, that you got 10% of traders who are trying their best who are winning, and at the same time, I believe there are only about 10% that give a damn about the mental and emotional side of trading, and I think there's a direct correlation between the two. So I'm going, I'm not going to insult your intelligence right here. I'm going to fly through this because there's really nothing to write down uh, except for something in the middle. Something in the middle, I'll tell you when to write it. It's, it's really a, an example that I like to give just about in every presentation because I think it's the most important part, I, put, I try to put it in every presentation I make because I just think it's, it's the missing piece to many traders. And it'll be in the middle, so have a paper and pen ready uh, or a, get ready to type it out on the side if you're a digital guy or gal. Um, because uh, otherwise, just, just hear me out and hear my emotion about the, the, these topics and, and uh, you know, why I believe they're important to, to us as traders. I mean, I'm with you on this. Uh, I'm... Um, you know, I love I love trading, uh, and I just I, I I'm always looking to build another system. I was I was building a system today in my mind, and I started to work with it online with one or two positions while I was trading, and it was working very well. So I'm in an excited state. I think I got another thing I'm I'm about to start to do. So I'm an excited trader, but it starts with your belief that that this is that you have a positive expectation not only of the results of trading but that you belong in here as a trader. That, you know, I used to hide from being a trader. I didn't know what to tell people. That's another story. Listen, does this sound like you? You believe that you have a good enough trading plan to make money, but you're not making money. You're frustrated to say the least. Does, does, or does this sound like you? It seems like every time you gain a nice profit, you give it right back, even sometimes faster than you made it. Or maybe you make money, you lose money, make, lose, make, lose. And, you have no consistency when you trade. You're not building anything. In fact, you're losing in the end. You're losing not only the mental fortitude, but, but the cash that's involved. Um, well, you're in the right place. And that's, I think, that's really why I, I connected with Fausto again. I said, let me at least give them the quick wrap up of, of what I believe are the four pillars of trading discipline. And these pillars really were something that I was not into. I, I never instructed on, um, years ago, but about a decade ago, I realized uh, that the basis of our business, which is <clears throat> helping traders with the mental and emotional issues, we were getting them very disciplined to follow their trading plan, to take the trade when they when their trading system told them to take the trade, to, to put in their stops and leave them there, no matter what the market said or what Jim Cramer said. And all of that, we were, we were doing very well, but we noticed that many of them were still losing rounds if they had lousy trading plans that didn't pay attention to what now are the four pillars. So we backed up a little bit, and in our course, we give, uh, we give, we've added a basic area, which are these four pillars, and that's what I want to give you uh, today, just a, a, a brief overview of it. Uh, and I want you to stay till the end because I, I, have, a, I have what I call an I love Fausto surprise, which is um, my mastery minutes for traders that I'm, I'm, I'm going to give uh, some of your access to. So here's what you're going to learn today what the four pillars are and, and how they achieve consistent profitable results in your trading or how, you know, I can't say that you're going to be profitable. Um, you know, there are people that no matter what you do, get in their own way uh, or they trade markets that are too thin. They make poor decisions. But if you mind your P's and Q's, there's no reason why you can't be profitable like other traders. Here's what you're going to learn. Actionable tips to apply the four pillars and, and especially the one thing I'm going to ask you to write down. That consistency and that consistency, being consistent to be a profitable trader, it is achievable. Now, I became obsessed with trading uh, years ago when I was running a, a uh, one of the largest option firms in the country. I started with them in 1979, but in 1981, I met a woman, Tisha, my wife, who, who was a subconscious trainer, and I had no idea what that was. We've been married 37 years now, 30 I guess it's 36 years uh, because it's only 2000. We got I got married Tisha six months after I met her. You can see the the uh, 
the, the microphone in my hand. She asked me what I was. I was singing to her during my wedding, and I, I asked her, you know, she, she asked me when she met me what I did, and I, I didn't know, you know, I didn't want to say tra trader. I was running, I was managing a group of traders, and I didn't want to say anything because I, I, I my concept of a trader was that we're gamblers, we're, we're fly by night, and this, this was a beauty. I didn't want to mess this up, so I said, I blurted out, I'm a philanthropist. <laughs> I said, and, and of course, I hadn't given a dime to anybody at that time. I was, you know, in my, uh, I was 30 years old. I was at the top of my game. I was making money. And the last thing I, you know, well, it was about wine and, uh, and and good times. And, you know, I, I, I said philanthropist. Well, she has, rem she reminds me just about every other day that we're philanthropists and that we need to continue to be successful to be philanthropists. So we get together at the first of the year of the year and decide which, which, uh, uh, who we're going to give to. And I, I, I just, you know, Tisha got me started understanding that the mind is is really what's going to make me uh, successful in trading. I was blowing out accounts like the last person. I mean, I was making so much money, it didn't matter at the time. Uh, and, and and so, um, you know, I would blow out an account and I'd start another one. I, I had no sense of what I was doing until my wife straightened me out and said, you know, until you can control yourself and until you can can stick to your program and not get excited, get too greedy when the market uh, goes your way and not get too, uh, get, you know, too on, on top of yourself when the market does it's not going to happen. She's the one that trained me. That training, I said, I got to bring this to the world. And that's when I jumped online and started delivering what she does uh, to, um, is, is really the core of what we do at the Discipline Trainer. So I couldn't do, I don't do anything without showing you who's responsible for all of this. Here are some, um, a hodgepodge of people who love me. I didn't show you all the ones that wanted their money back, but here are the ones that uh, that like me. They, they say that, that what I have to give them is hugely rewarding, and the program was wonderful. So, you know, I wouldn't show you anything that made me look bad. To be consistently a, prof a consistently profitable trader, there's really only two things you need. You need to have a trading plan, and you've got that with Fausto, and you need to have the discipline to run that trading plan. Everything else is a distraction. Everything else is a distraction. So let's go with the, here, here are the pillars. First of all, it is the solid trading plan. You got, and to somebody emailed me today and said, um, you know, hi Norman, um, um, I'm um, getting back into trading again. We did so well on the instruction before and I, can I, uh, um, can, can, but I need a new trading. I want something new. Can you tell me, can you point me to a, a trading plan? I, you know, that kind of question is a losing question because you have to know who you are. Of course, I sent them back a list of about 20 questions uh, about what type of trader you was, so on and so forth. You have to know who you are because did you ever hear of the situation? Maybe it happened to you where you heard somebody did really well with a trading plan. They, they gave it to you and somehow you lost money. And so you called them a liar. Well, they may have done very well because it was their kind of plan. Okay, you've got to understand yourself. Are you conservative? Are you a risk taker? Are you somewhere in the middle? What of a trading plan you have in order for you to keep that positive expectancy that you're going to hear me say a lot, you need to have a plan that matches you. You have to know your timeline. Okay, are you a day trader? Are you a swing trader? Are you long term? Um, and of course, your trading time is of the essence from the standpoint that some of us play trade part time and full time. When are you available to trade? I know people who do very well that they get up at one in the morning and go to sleep at three in the morning, and I don't know how they, I don't know how they do it. Those two or three hours, they love to trade currencies in the middle of the night. They say it's very uh, markets are very normal and regular. I, I, I can't confirm because they can't get up. Uh, so maybe so you can confirm that. But you got to know who you are. You cannot just take somebody's um, way of doing uh, trading and and have it for yourself. Now, there's a difference between a trading plan and a trading system, and, and I, I can't go through a lot, any of it really today, except for to say that a trading, a trading system is where do I buy, where do I sell, where do I put my stop, uh, what, what uh, techniques do I use, am I using Fibonacci, am I using GAN, what, what, what am I doing? A trading plan is, includes the trading system, but it also includes something that very few people includes exercises and spending five or ten minutes every day on the most important part of your trading and that's the mental and emotional issues of trading either complimenting yourself supporting yourself 
or recognizing the, the situation as it really is where you have some issues that you keep chasing trades, you keep um, you, you get greedy, you get down when you get four or five losers in a row, that you, you've lost con your concept of what's of running your trading system because you've you have not engulfed that trading system in a in a in the loving arms of your appreciation of the mental and emotional issues which comprises the entire trading plan. So uh, a lot of people use those interchangeably. I I guess I'm I'm at fault of that too. But I wanted to make sure that you understood that I I look at it as concentric circles where the the core is the, your trading system in the middle, but you need to wrap it. With, with, with your trading discipline. Okay, here are some of the elements of a trading system, of a good trading system. You gotta define your entry criteria. And, um, you know, I say define your entry criteria, and everybody knows that. They spend all their time on the entry criteria, but I believe, you know, there used to be a guy that you could drop in the middle of a, of a city with, he, he said, uh, he was a real estate guy, and he says, give me, a, give me my, my identification of 20 bucks and drop me in the middle of Phoenix, Arizona, and I'll own a property in 24 hours. Um, he's still around. Uh, I believe that. I believe I can do that too. And I've done that. I played with myself to do that, where I just close my eyes and I and I click something. You know, one position of a small account like corn. I trade a lot of commodities, corn, and then I manage where I am based on where, the direction I'm in, looking around. So it's exits that are the most important. And I don't do that every day. It's not a trading plan. I'm just saying one time I did it for fun and I, 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 I made some money and I thought to myself, yeah, I think I could do that. Just like, uh, I forgot what his name. Oh, Robert, there it is, Robert Allen. That's exactly who it was. And, um, and so I believe that you can actually just, if you're going to ignore anything, you may want to ignore this part, but don't ignore the exit part. Okay, so um, you've got your defining your entry criteria. You want to define your stops and your position size. And we're going to mention position size again because position size really is a an art and something that you should be paying much more attention to if you don't. Um, it, you're better off waiting for ideal setups and applying a larger position size than you are the same uh, the same position size, whether it's a B setup or an A, you shouldn't be taking B setups, an A or an A plus setup. And if you wait for A plus setups all the time, you'll, you may be sitting in front of the screen doing nothing. So you've got to take opportunities. Again, getting into the trade is one thing. Managing the trade and getting out is the real thing. So um, position sizing, I'm, it's not that it's more important. I'm just saying that, that it's a tool that most people don't realize they could be using. Um, Three, define your exit strategy. Again, I don't want to say a million things about that, but again, your exit strategy is really where it's at. Okay, and your uncle point. I call it your uncle point. Here's how. I, here's here's why I define the uncle point. You don't want to get punched in the solar plexus. You because I don't care how well trained you are. If you allow yourself to take a 10% hit on 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 one trade or one group of trades in a day then you're, you're giving yourself a punch in the solar plexus and it could take weeks if not months to get over it totally and that's you don't want that to happen you must keep a positive expectancy so you must do everything to defend against your uncle point now my uncle point is three percent if i lose if i'm and, and i being a futures trader m majority of the time i trade stocks and futures but mostly futures, and I may be in corn, I may be in gold, and I may have an E-mini on. I will not allow myself to lose more than 3% on everything total in that day. So if, I'm, if I've lost a percent and a half, on any individual trade, a percent and a half to 2%, if I wind up losing 3% uh, in two trades, I'll close down that third trade, even if it's a winner, because I will not... And, and, and you know, it's a lot of people would leave that third trade on, believing that hey, I want to get that money back. This is my, you know, I got a winner here going and running back. It's not worth it. You don't want to break your uncle point. You don't want that punch in the solar plexus. I mean, you, I think you all know what I'm talking about. So build your system. You, you want to build your system first, and then you want to test it. You want to paper trade it for mechanics, only for mechanics. Paper trading, I believe, is way over overvalued. Other than understanding the you know what happens if the computer goes down are you ready with your 800 number to call the desk uh you know the mechanical things uh you know you'll find yourself misclicking and you think you sold it you didn't or sometimes you you, you set the machine to two and you really just wanted one 
Um, and, and so you, you've got to get the mechanics down. Uh, so you paper trade to get the mechanics down. Then you go live with the smallest uh, uh, amount of risk that you can take. Um, and so if that's two positions or one position, whatever it is, the smallest risk you can take. Manage your emotions during that period of time in that, in that risk level and then step it up. Okay, you step it up as you go along. And because even if you go from one position to two position, there's a level of emotion that comes in that you're going to have to deal with. So you don't go from one position to 10 positions. Okay, because you'll like, you, you, will, you will not succeed. I will tell you that. So the idea is that, and don't, don't make paper trading an excuse. That small risk area is where you're going to learn. In, that, in this, I told you I'm developing a trading plan. In this trading plan, I'm not taking any more, and this is a $25,000 account, I'm not taking, taking any more than a $200 risk in any particular trade on a, on a $20,000 account. That's what I'm talking about, small risk. I want to manage it. And I told my wife the other day, I made $200 a day on that new system for six days in a row. Today, I lost $25. So I'm, I'm mad because I'm doing everything perfectly because my risk is low, my emotions are not getting involved, I train my mind every day, I journal for five or I, I'm not a great journaler. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm a good journaler, but I, I don't like, somebody sent me an email today where they had like five paragraphs. I'm not going to read that. I need bullet points. I'm a bullet point guy. Maybe you can't tell that by the way I talk, but uh, <laughs> I'm a bullet point guy. And and so um, ah, let's go on. So you, you don't you know you 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 want to take small risks, okay? And as you develop your system, okay. Here's the second. So you got your trading plan, risk and money management. Again, this is this is the key to staying out of the negativity zone. You don't want to take the big risks. Again, there's an old expression, and and I I laughed about this one time. I forgot I forget exactly what context, but I remember we said to each other this expression together, Fausto and I. I'd rather be out of a trade wishing I was in. I was, I'd rather be in a trade wishing I was out than out of a trade wishing I was in. So when in doubt, when it doesn't feel right, you, you know, don't do it. Don't do anything that's not dictated by your trading plan. This is the most important area of all. And again, the risk, we, I mentioned a little about risk uh, position sizing. Uh, Paul King, who's, on, who's uh, one of my, part of my team, Paul uh, is a, a guy who contrib contributed to what we do. Uh, and Paul uh, handles a lot of what we do as far as the uh, risk and money management. He, t he, uh, he, makes, uh, he talks about position sizing. He makes it akin to turning on the volume uh, on a radio dial. But I think I mentioned a little bit more about that, a little more. I, I mentioned that already today, so I'm not going to go into that. Position sizing, I think, is uh, very underutilized. Again, your exit strategy, you have to divine all the if-thens. But I tell you, every week... Certainly, that night Trump was elected, that taught me something about if-thens that I didn't have in my trading plan if you held anything overnight. Uh, you know, the flash crash, there's always something going on, and sometimes it's a market that's going sideways and you miss an opportunity somewhere else. You have to stay in opportunities, and you, you have to continue. You know, if a market is going sideways for six months, you know, you should have had an if-then if you're a trader and say, this is not the, unless you're selling options against it. Um, uh, it puts in calls against you. You have to have either strategy of taking advantage of it, or, but you have to define all your if thens. Okay, uh, this this area, the risk and money management area, is where the majority of your research and development should be spent, which is the opposite of what most new traders and struggling traders do. When I sit down and talk to somebody about trading, especially if it's one on one, this is the area that they give a lot of lip service, but when I look deeper, they're really not honoring this. Okay, here's the area that I want to spend just a second, about five minutes on, and I want to get, here's with the paper and pencil part. I want to get, if you're not journaling, if you're not journaling, you're, you're, you're denying yourself one of the greatest tools that you have of self-analysis. Because again, the only thing you can control is yourself. And we, we all, if we look, if we look at our trading and what we do, uh, you, you know, what are how how we're guided by our subconscious mind? We we all know that consciously we can think. That's why you can read a book and about what you should be doing uh, about trading. You can read Van Tharp. Or you can read all these great authors on, on what you should be thinking of mentally and emotionally. But you can't get yourself to do it. You're still taking a bad trade. You still you know put on too many positions when you're on a winning streak. You you know you you just will 
you, you keep on doing the same thing over and over again because your conscious mind knows what it wants to do, but your subconscious mind is really what controls what you do. So if you're wondering what is true for you, what your subconscious mind believes is protecting you as, as an individual, not a traitor, but an individual, a loving uh, human being, uh, then, then watch what you do. And, 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 and if, you're, if you're not pulling the trigger on trades, it just means that your conscious mind may be saying, pull the trigger, why can't I pull the trigger? But, you, but every time it goes to your subconscious mind and says, hey, pull the trigger, your subconscious mind says, oh no, it's gambling. Because when you were a kid at uh, five years old and your parents were arguing about uh, something your father or mother did in, in trading and that's gambling, you, you almost lost a house and don't do that again and everybody was crying and yelling and, and you were crying because you were just a kid and that, Im that impressed upon your subconscious mind that trading is gambling. And here you are now, a mature individual, you can't take a trade and you're wondering why. And you're consciously saying, I did all the thing, I, I, you know, I, I gave Fausto all this money, I'm, I'm going to give Norman all this money, and, you know, whatever you're saying, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to do everything, I give to the church, and I'm doing all the work. Why isn't this coming back to me? Why can't I take a trade? It's because you're, being, you're, being, you're making decisions based on your, your dominant neural net, which is your dominant subconscious belief. I can't get into that with you right now, other than to say, Journaling is the first step and, and a great step to starting to, 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 uh, to change that. And let me, let me give you the technique right now. It's, it's your window to self-evaluation. Okay, the first thing that you need to ask yourself, is this, are you having a good time? Am I, the veins are popping out in my neck. Are you having a good time here? Somebody comment, I just want to make sure you're still with me here. Okay, you got a lot of yep and a yepper, which I guess means you got a scratch or something. Scratch yet? Okay. Self-critique. What you here's the first thing you ask yourself. So if you're not journaling, here's something that you can do in the in, in about a three or four minute time at the end of the trading day. That's all I'm asking you to do. Okay, what did I do right and where did I not follow my trading plan? Okay, now I'm gonna give you an example. Where what what did I what did I do? Today I took every trade my trading plan told me to take. I did a great job taking all my trades. I'm proud of myself. Okay, I will write all that down. I honor myself in the beginning. You want to start, again, the positive expectancy. You want to start with the positive nature of what you're doing. You're a trader, just like I didn't know what to tell my wife. Now I'm proud out there. Now it's cool to, it's not cool to be a losing trader. It's really cool to be a successful trader. Okay, so what, and, and you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to fake it before you make it. I think that's the expression. So what, what, what did I do right today? Okay. I, today I took every trade my trading plan gave me, uh, my trading system gave me. Um, I, 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 I'm, I did really well. I'm proud of myself. And then what did I, the ne next thing you ask is where did I not follow my trading plan? Now here, you don't want to beat yourself up. Uh, you don't want to beat yourself up here. What you want to do is you want to say, you want to take responsibility, but you want to, uh, but, but you don't want to beat yourself up. So today I, today I did something unnorman like now, I, I usually say un-Norman-like or beside myself or it was unlike me. Okay, you, don't, you can use Norman if you want, but you can use your own name. Today, I did something un-Norman-like. I lifted my stop on a corn trade because I was afraid it would run the stop because volume was low. Okay, so what I did there was I, I took responsibility for it and I gave the reason. It's important to give the reason. Okay, I... But today I did something unnorman like I did something that's not like me. I was beside myself and I lifted the stop on a corn trade and I took a loss I shouldn't have because I was afraid the, the, the volume was thinning. Okay, so what did you do right? Where did you not follow your trading plan? And then what caused me mentally and emotionally not to follow my trading plan and i mentioned the volume in this in, in the case of my example and then then you then a statement of commitment tomorrow to make you a disciplined trader so you say the next sentence would be tomorrow i will be the stop king i will put my stop in stops in and and i will not change them for any reason at all i will put my stops in according to my trading plan and leave them there i will be the stop king and i always end with I'm a wise and disciplined trader and I do the dis I do this things that a wise and disciplined trader does. I even have my button with my wise voice. I am a wise and disciplined trader. And I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. 
So I, you know, if, if I'm not telling it myself, I have my wife tell it. Even when she's not here, I press that button. It's like an easy button I had made. So I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that I'm not smart. You know, I'm wise. That's beyond smart. That's you're doing the right things for the right reasons. Okay. So again, as a, as a wrap. Okay. Here's here's the technique. What did I'll do? I'll just give you the example. So I'll just give you my particular entry. I had a great day trading today. I took every trade my trading plan gave me. I'm very proud of myself for that. However, I did something that was unnormal. Like I lifted my stop, caused me to lose money because I thought that the market volume was thinning out. But tomorrow. I will, I, I will be the stop king. I will put my stops in according to my trading plan, and I will not lift it come hell or high water. I am a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. Okay, just tell me you got that down. Just give me the chat thing. Chat me and tell me that you, you got that. You, you have that simple process. Just a couple of yeses. Okay, now tomorrow, and then tomorrow morning, I am going to make an entry. So I, I do it in the beginning and the end. I gave you the end first because the beginning is simple. The beginning is just a restatement of this commitment. So instead of tomorrow I am, you'll say, today I am the stop king. I will place all my stops according to my trading plan, and I won't, I won't change them hella high water. I will operate my stops according to my trading plan. Okay, so that's my entry, for, and I'm a wise and disciplined trader, and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. That's my morning entry. So I don't think much about my morning entry except for refer back to the last day because you're going to wind up seeing that you're making that one or two and, and new guys maybe three mistakes over and over and over and over again. So this is going to have you focus on one thing, one thing that, that makes it, that, that's going to straighten it out for you. Now, it, it brings it to your attention. You're going to have to train your mind, and we have the tools to do that. But I, wa I want you to, this is the long method of doing it, but it's, it's the method that keeps you focused, okay? Um, and and it's, it's something that I continue to do because I do everything I can. Um, I know somebody, that, there's a guy named Ray B Barris that, that, that runs, I think, two or three billion dollars in a hedge fund out of Singapore. He's a, he's a really great guy, and he's done some work with me. And he journals an hour a day. He journals an hour a day and gets into his mind. I said, Ray, I can't do that. I can't read an email longer than two paragraphs. He says, I, I, he says it's that important. And, and he, because I, he says, my hedge fund will not be as successful if I didn't continue to introspect. So hopefully you got that. Hopefully you take that as serious as I do. Okay, the fourth thing. So you got building a trading plan, pillar one. Risk and money management, pillar two. Uh, journaling, pillar three. And three. Running your trading plan, your trading as a business. You must frame your trading as a business. Your losses are the cost of doing business. You're not advertising. You know, you don't have money spent in advertising. Your your, co your cost of doing business is your losses. Your profit is every time you make a, a winning trade. Which means that when you make a winning trade, you don't treat it like something other than a business would treat profit. You don't make a crazy trade because hey, it's just profit money. You know, hey, you know, if you if you run your business like that, you'll you'll you're gonna you'll be out of business. If you run your trading like that, you're gonna be out of business. You must. So sometimes it's good to read the way a business runs and parallel that into the way you into your trading business. I don't care if you're doing it part time or you trade one of the five minutes a day and you you it's a part time business. I mean, almost to the point where you take out a, a, a you make a corporation or at least do what is that. Uh, where you take out a, a name uh, that you, but you know, may not have to file. You should be filing taxes if you're doing any kind of trading. You should be filing taxes as a trader. In any event, that's another discussion. So, again, trade, tra because your trading is a business, you need to provide certain things, okay? The business should be profitable. Get to a growing positive bottom line. That's the way you have to frame it. You're here to make money. Business should hold costs down, transaction fees, slippage, etc. Now, it's not as important as it used to be. I mean, I can... I can do a round turn of E-mini for less than $5, I think it is. And, I mean, it used to be $50 a side. I mean, and you were happy to pay that for the opportunity. And they didn't have the mini contracts at the time. It was, I think it was five times the size. So uh, it didn't say, it was all, I saw a relative, I guess. But listen, 
transaction fees add up. If you don't think so, look at the end of the year and, and look at all you, you spent. Sometimes all of your losses is a culmination of all your transaction fees and slippage. Um, and slippage is another topic we can spend a day on. The business should be enjoyable. You got to, just like a business should be enjoyable, you're trading, you have to be passionate. Like I, here I am doing it for 30 some odd years and I'm still passionate. And, and when I talk to, we look at each other, Prosper and I look at each other, and we, oh, we break out in a smile because we both know how passionate we are about it. And, and you know, generally we don't talk about trading together. We talk about life with kids. You know, he's a great father. And, a, and I ask him, you know, how do you get that hair? You know what I mean? We talk about things other than trading because we're passionate about everything that we do. And, and I think if you're passionate about trading, again, you've got to respect yourself first. Okay. Um, so run your trading as a business. You've got to be a leader. You've got to overcome your emotions. You've got to keep accurate records. Uh, it's funny because, it, it, you know, the, the, back to the journaling for a second. A lot of people think journaling is just um, recording your trades. And that's, there is some value, very good value to that. But I can get that from looking at my daily statements in a, in a, loo, in a loose leaf I still use and a, and a notebook, you know, and looking at my, 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 my statement, um, my uh, monthly statement, I can get a lot of that from what I need. But I find that on a daily basis, I've got to, I've got to continue to be on top of myself and where I make mistakes, honor myself and improve myself. So again, trading, uh, you, you've got to deal with framing it as a business. You have to have self-discipline, self-control, and you have to direct and control others. You know, I have my, my office door in the house. I've been trading out of my house since uh, really 1991, and uh, and my when I have that door closed, my loving wife knows not to come in here because, well, a knock, she'll knock, or she, she presented me today with, she it was real quiet in here, she presented me today with a, with an um, mango that she cut up and kind of sheepishly came in, I said, come on in, because she knows that this is a business and, and I'm, in, I'm in my office. Uh, you know, she asked me, you know, today before I, came, I did this, I'm not going anywhere. I took a shower, put on a, a pair of pants, a nice pair of pants, a nice shirt. She says, where are you going? I said, I'm doing a webinar. She says, is it video? I said, no, I'm doing, I got to feel good, you know, and, and part of it is, is, you know, looking crisp. And even though you can't see me, I'm looking really good, believe me. Okay, so be a leader. You got to be a leader. And I, when I say believe, be a leader, I don't mean order people around, even though I mentioned about asking my wife to stay out of the office. I'm talking about I'm talking about leading your thoughts and yourself. You, you must establish in your mind that you are a wise and disciplined trader and you do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. And if you're not doing anything for your mental and emotional issues, this is probably what is holding you back. And if you're, if you're piddling along making one-tenth of what you know you could be making or what some guy that seems, a gal that seems to be, uh, you know, uh, half your smarts is, is making 10 times your money. It's because it, you don't need to be extra smart. I mean, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta know a little math. You gotta know a little, but, but you don't need to be a valedictorian. You just, you need to take control of your emotions and your, and your, and your thought process. Okay. I, that is really, um, the, the end of what I want to show you, I'm going to just take about four or five minutes and, and show you what, what I have. If you're interested in going a little further in the, in the uh, mental and emotional area, did you have fun? Uh, because I'm, I'm uh, I, for those people that, uh, that, that just came for the presentation on, on the four pillars. Um, thank you for being here. And, and if you're, I see there are a number of people that are already part of the discipline trader, but let me show you what the discipline trader is about. And, and I've got that, that Fausto, I love you Fausto bonus. You feel you may have some talent to be a consistent trader. Ah, you know why you're here. Let's not read all of this. Uh, I'm sorry. That, that was my fault. Uh, so how do you achieve the consistency? That seems to, when I question people, it's the consistency that they lack. And that's, that's part and parcel to the emotional and mental consistency. There is a complicated way to do it, simple way to do it. I'm going to show you the simple way, and that is the mastery program. I'm not going to bore you with a lot of things, but I will tell you that the only complete, th this is the only complete resource available anywhere that guides you to make sure that you have a solid trading plan in place and gives you the proven way to eliminate the mental and emotional landmines that are sabotaging your success. And in the program, and I'm going to fly through these few slides, I just, uh, when I just went through the, the pillars, that's the basics. Then there are the core modules and the bonuses. And for a review of the pillars, 
running a trading plan, employing risk management, journaling. We do a lot of that and, uh, and trading. Not a lot of journaling, but enough to get you started. We have a, something that we give you 99 examples of journaling. How do I journal? I don't know. That doesn't sound right to me. Here's 99 people, 99, and they were contributed by our members. How do you journal? And they, they pour it in with examples. So you can get to read through that. Okay, here are, the, here are some of the mental and emotional core modules. This is really where we shine, the mental and emotional stuff. Strength to pull the trigger. There are six core modules. The first one is strength to pull the trigger. And when you look into a core module, and I won't show you the inside of everything. I'll just show you one. In our course, it starts with an introductory module. Um, the, the, the introduction is just a video of me, my, my face, telling you how to work through the material. And it's previewed by that second element, the subconscious training, which is a seven-minute mental training. If, if you like to use mental training on your, in your car and as you work out, I do it when I work out sometimes. Uh, there's some affirmations you can download, uh, MP3. I also give you a little bit of insight to maybe some future elements that we discuss. Uh, there's a couple of PDFs. So, again, it's grouped so that you can really get over. And, and you take that subconscious training every day for um, you know, pulling the trigger is your problem. You stick to that for eight or ten days. That's seven minutes before you start trading, and you will then build that neural net. Instead of reacting to your parents arguing, you're going to react to the fact that you're a wise and disciplined trader, and pulling the trigger on your trade is important because you've done all that work. So, um, again, we specialize in the mental and emotional. The other, some of the other core, the other core modules: overcoming thoughts of fear and greed. Very big trading to make money mindset. We talked about a little bit of that today in the business part. Strength to take your losses. There's a mentality about you know believing that you're a loser and uh, that that I was a victim of and and I hear it now and it makes me almost cry because it it's something that you can get over very very it's probably one of the most effective things that we do to get over that and probably the most talked about core module is exercising patience. Winds up that patience is is a very big factor in doing mildly well and very well, allowing a trade to run, uh, uh, not lifting a stop, waiting, not anticipating two moving averages crossing before you get in. Patience, patience could be the secret key. Anyway, that's one of the modules. Uh, and sustaining discipline, because really trading is a marathon, not a, uh, not a, um, a, a sprint. The first trade I made today, I made 20, uh, this uh, last year was, um, it was $25,000, and I felt victim to my own, even though I'm the guy. Uh, I was making small profits uh, after that, small profits and loss. I'm, I, you know, I did well from month to month, but somehow, because I, I compartmentalized that in my head, that, that that thing was a special thing. And if I had said to myself that that's the kind of thing that's going to happen more, I think I would have been drawn more to to making more $25,000 hits uh, on a $100,000 account. Was 25, that was to 25% move in an account, and, and literally it was about three weeks. So anyway, I'm just saying sustaining discipline is a very important thing, especially when you've got some of those other core modules in place. And, and you also get a lot of bonuses. I mentioned the 97 journaling examples. Uh, there's a time system. You know, we, we're always running out of time. And I go through a system that's not about how to divide your time, but mostly how to take off a lot of time to re uh, to re-energize you got to take time off as a trader you cannot be sitting in front of the tube all day long every day your time off is just as important if not more important than the time that you sit and i'm, I'm going to show you how i manage time and, and how i use those times in between that i call buffer times uh, and then of course lifestyle sessions i mentioned patience uh what happened was a lot of times people will come to me and say you know I t i've been taking that core module seven minute training on patience and it's doing really well for me. He said, but I'm also noticing that I'm more patient with my wife and my kids. Is that normal? I say, yeah, it is because now you're now, now the dominant, one of your dominant traits is that you're a patient person. Well, we, over the course of all these years that I've been with my wife, we've done a lot of things. We've helped golfers and, and trade and, and, and tennis players until I wound up saying, oh, I'm going to help my people, the traders. So uh, we took, there's 70 different mental training sessions on other parts of your life. Better sex, uh, losing weight, stop smoking, uh, tennis. There's all kinds of there's seven or eight sessions on each one of those things, except for the, there's only a couple on the sex thing. Uh, but what I'm saying is that that same mental process that, that you use to solidify those core elements to be a better trader, 
you can you can make some lifestyle changes that are dramatic. We give all those to you uh, as a bonus. Anyway, you also get my trade. I don't know if you've probably seen me whenever I go to any um, uh, any of these uh, um, expos. They're always asking me, "Where's your black T-shirt?" Uh, because that's that's kind of how I'm known. So again, you get the basic series, you get all the core modules, you get the bonuses, and uh, the fast action I love Fausto bonus is tw they're 25 one minute audios and for anybody that orders um, today I will throw this in it's I'll give you access to this 25 it, it's just me jacked up for even worse than right now eh, maybe not worse but similar I, and I take on specific topics you know getting over losses um, you know let, continuing a winning streak stopping a losing streak whatever it is I get you thinking in the right direction in 60 seconds it's audio they're audios and I, it, you're really really gonna love them so that's my I'm gonna give that to you too as a, but, but only those that, that take action today because I that's that I got to give you manually okay uh, and you'll create all these good things that I won't uh, you know you, you're gonna be independent you'll be you'll have everything that Fausto promised you and so what's the investment it's forty nine dollars it's <laughs> It's forty nine dollars a month, and uh, that's all it is. So you know, take a forty nine dollar risk. Join me. Uh, if you don't like it, quit after after. Um, uh, in fact, I'll just I'll just tell you right now. I'll, I'll even give you the uh, I'll even give you a thirty day money back guarantee. There you go. I thought I threw that slide. I never give this, and I made this slide up. I didn't think I, I did put it in. I never do this. If you look on our sales page at the Discipline Trader. Uh, you won't see a money back guarantee, but for Fausto's people, I'm going to give you because you're more intelligent than the average person. The disciplinetrader.com forward slash join. This is going to take you directly to the uh, to the order page. I'm not going. You know, I don't want you to go to the sales page and get get wrapped up in in, in uh, something that prints out to 25 pages. You know what I'm about. You know what this is about. It's $49, and I'm guaranteeing if you don't like it within the first 30 days, I'll give you that $49 back. But go to the here's the uh, here's what the here's what that link will bring you to the disciplinetrader.com forward slash join. Okay, I hope you. I know I'm sweating. I hope you're sweating a little bit too. Uh, if you've got any questions, I I I I'd love to take them right now. I I cut it. I did it within an hour, which is uh, really good for me. So uh, if you've got any questions at all, actually I did about 45 minutes. I, uh, I'm a wise and disciplined trader and I do the things that a wise and disciplined trader does. So if you've got any questions, I'll take them. Otherwise, um, the hell with me, whatever you want. Okay, anybody still there? So Mental part of trading is the hardest. It, you know, it's the hardest until you until you get it down. I took a class today. Oh, you're welcome, David. I took a class yesterday. Oh, listen, listen. I'm I'm training. I'm 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 in my 60s, and I'm uh, I'm about to, I'm training for a bodybuilding contest. It's my I have to have a goal. So I'm I'm like becoming a monster. And one of the things I needed was more cardio. So I went to the, something called Orange Theory, which is a uh, uh, which is something that's supposed to bring your heart rate up to. Oh my God! It killed me. And but they t and they told me it would get easier as I as I keep doing it. So that's what I'm going to tell you, Lawrence. It gets easier as you train your mind. The only thing, the difference between getting on a treadmill and lifting weights and doing the rowing that they have you alternate on in this Orange Theory to get your heart rate up to 80 or 85 percent of your maximum, um, that's a lot harder than closing your eyes and, and sitting in your chair for seven minutes listening to my wife's beautiful voice. So. I think he got it a little bit easier. Uh, if he has somehow never goes to school, uh, yeah, I know, I hear you. Uh, nobody makes any money. I'm the, you know, I was wondering why I was able to kind of take over the space of mental and emotional part of trading because nobody wants to be in it because traders don't care about it. They want to know what's hot right now. Where do I buy? Where where am I going? And and this is worth the ninety percent of doing. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome, John. Uh, my daughter loves Orange Theory. I know, John. Although I know your daughter's probably 24 years old, and uh, and she's in great shape. So uh, I don't want to hear any more about that, Steve. Okay. Thank you, Norma. Really good stuff. Looking forward to more. You're welcome, Paul. Hopefully, you'll you'll take my advice and uh, and uh, and those that are. Uh, I know that there are many people who, uh, who work with Fausto that are on the Dispen Trader. DispenTrader.com forward slash join. Give up $49, and uh, and I'll give it back to you if you don't like it. Yeah, I know, Stephen. They're unbelievable. Uh, and as a as a lech myself, I 
it's the only reason I, I actually tried it out because of, you know, uh, because at, when, when you're in your 60s, all the women are younger than you. And so it's great. It's fabulous. You can dream. You know, and this is where my mental training comes in. You know, I, I have a vivid imagination. Not that horrible, but, but I, I'm, keep it clean, Stephen, please. Any questions? Any questions? I'm actually a responsible guy. But, um, you know, this is, uh, and I take my, you know, I, I work out at 7 in the morning. Get up at 6 and work out at 7, either the weight training or the cardio. And, and you know, it's one of the beautiful things about trading. You can, you can avail yourself of all those great things, okay? Thank you, Lita. Really great. Thanks for participating and, and being a voice. Uh, um, you know, uh, you, you, you keep everything, you keep the plates spinning. I don't know if you remember that guy from the Gary Moore show where he's spinning the plates on a stick and each bunch of sticks and he has to run back and forth. To, all the older guys are remember the Gary Moore show. Anyway, you're welcome, JJ. It's, um, any other thank yous? It feels good. I mean, a thank you. I'm, I'm going to thank you for being here, everybody. I appreciate you. Okay, hope you join. Hope you, uh, you know, there's not a lot to ask questions about really in, in what we have, so I, I appreciate you. Um, did you do it? Lita, I can see. I'm going to be able to tell whether you're telling the truth. Now you got all night to decide, you know, Lita. But uh, don't let it slip away because, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I, had a, I, I, I had dinner the other night. I, think, I don't think I can get away in a decent place for my wife and myself for less than $100, including the tip. I don't, I don't remember that. And, uh, you know, and I think about $49, and I'm, 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 it's a risk reversal where I give it to you don't like it. It's not a risk. Give it a shot. I think if you look inside what we have, you really start to like it. Um, I'm a little different than most, and that's what I like about Fausto. He's a little bit different than most. He speaks his mind, which is what I love about him. Uh, uh, maybe not quite as much as I do, but, but he, he does. He's a little bit more controlled. Thank you, Chris. Chris Christofferson with a K. Chris Telemanjaro. All right. Colatane. Colantane. That's a great name. Norman. You know, my parents named me Norman. I thought, what are they doing? Couldn't they? And Norm, that's even worse. No, that's, that's all right, Chris. Most, a lot of people call me Norm. Uh, but um, I said, couldn't you have named me something cool like Justin or, you know, I don't know, or Clemente? Oh, you're welcome, Dana. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I can't help with a personal touch. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. I thought the day that I couldn't be myself is the day I would get out of the business. So I really appreciate that comment, Dana. Okay, I don't. Uh, I, I guess Eric or John. Uh, don't know if uh, you're there anymore, but I, I guess I'm ready to turn it over to you. Hopefully, I'll have some new people to uh, uh, to uh, to help out with the mental and emotional issues. And hear my what my wife did for me. You can you can have it for yourself. That's what it's all about. Again, thank you very much, everybody.